Ladies and gentlemen, the show we've all been waiting for. Paranormal Buzz Radio is proud to present IREP Paranormal and Friends with your hosts, Kim Purvis and Allison Robinson. Live every Thursday night on Spreaker, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific. Be sure to check out their Facebook page, REP Paranormal Busters. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the host or the guest do not necessarily reflect the views of Paranormal Buzz Radio or its sponsors. Use of any material produced by Paranormal Buzz Radio without express written consent is strictly prohibited. For information on everything Paranormal Buzz Radio has to offer, visit our website, ParanormalBuzzRadio.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Listener discretion is advised. Okay, everybody, welcome tonight to another show with REP Paranormal and Friends. Um, tonight we have a couple special guests for you. Um, we have Jim and Tammy Beth from um, EVP. Is that right? Earthbound Voices? Earthbound Voices Paranormal. Okay, yep, that's what I thought. All right. Uh, okay, so if you want to go ahead and give us a little bit of a background... On how you guys uh, came to be? Okay. Um, well, we both had experiences growing up as kids. And when we got together 17 years ago, something like that, <laughs> um, we talked and decided that, you know, it would be kind of interesting to learn more about the paranormal. But as everybody knows, equipment is extremely expensive. So we decided not to kind of go forward with that. And we started buying storage units. And one of our storage units had a bag of paranormal equipment. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and we knew what some of it was, but didn't really know the ins and outs of what the equipment did or anything like that. So we found... Um, the Belvoir Winery in Liberty, Missouri, mm -hmm. to that does ghost tours, and um, so we went to one of theirs and talked to the team there and tried to get information from them, and then we started contacting other teams, and we end up helping out at the Belvoir for what six to eight months. Six or eight months, and then we decided we wanted to form our own team, and that's what we did, and that's what we've been doing ever since. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's, Definitely. That's pretty cool, though, that you find stuff in the storage shed. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It was a RDEP, um, a, a fan of lights, um, K2 meters, and... One of those thermometer... Yeah, thermometer. The heat. There was a camera in there, too, I think oh, it was. Sweet. It's been so long, it's hard to remember. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> we now have... Uh, we went from one bag, now we've got... I don't know how much. <laughs> Probably more than we need for the two of us. <laughs> Let's see. We went through. We went from six bags to big construction worker carts with wheels on Sorry. it. We've got three of those now full. <laughs> yeah, we're we're probably close to that. <laughs> you don't realize how much accumulates over a period of time, and then you start looking at stuff and you're like oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> i hear you there and there's more stuff coming out it's like oh i'd like to have but <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it's that money situation <laughs> exactly okay let's start off with i know you just went to the winery with a uh, Amy and Adam and them. Yes. How 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 was that with with them with a big group like that? 
It was fun. Yeah, it's fun, but I'd like say it's hard to do a full fledged, you know, true investigation with that many people. Mm -hmm. I think our group had, I think our group, we went to four different locations and we had like 18 people. And I mean, we was in the bunker there and we had some, we actually had, it was quiet enough, we actually had some pretty good results from the bunker up there at the Miami. And we were with um, Greg and Dana Newkirk for that one. Oh, uh huh. And they did their uh, Estes method. Uh huh. Go ahead and, and elaborate we, on that. You know, we're we don't we're know. still learning about it. So yeah, it's, it's an SP seven. They do they do the headphones and the um, the um, blindfold. The yep, yep. one. They think she was shut off or she didn't hear nothing that we were talking about. You know, in the group. Like I say, we haven't experimented with it yet, so we don't know a lot about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it was it was really interesting to see how it worked and the results that we were actually getting. Oh. Because we had our, because when we got there, we asked them if it was okay to put some of our equipment out. So we put our um, 360 periscope out and our motion ball. Yeah. And yeah. there's an, a boy spirit there, Michael. Um, and we've gotten to know Michael over the years that we've investigated out there. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And um, he had been kind of prominent throughout the night, they said. So when she started doing the Estes method, our 360 started lighting up. Oh, wow. And I think it wasn't even... Probably 10, 10 15 well, they minutes. Well, asking to light the ball up, and the balls kind of start lighting yeah. up. The motion balls start lighting up. Wow. Yeah. yeah and, that she, was... and like I said, she's blindfolded, too. At the, you know, at the time there, she had a blindfold, but she had her, her eyes covered up, and she had the headphones on. But there were certain things that she was saying, like, one of them was what the um, – Asked to light it up, and she said just before just before that she thought she heard something about lighting it up with SB seven. Oh wow! Okay. And yeah. about that time, it, the about the time the ball lit up on its own. Oh, that's awesome. And Greg actually picked our put our three sixty down there by the ball on the floor, and Dana had just said, "Is it getting cold right here?" You know, she was like, "I'm getting really cold." Uh huh. And the ones that were sitting by her were like, yes, it is cold. And all of a sudden she said, I'm here. And, and that was Michael. Well, okay. <laughs> uh, some, yeah, our screen, our screen, our, our screen, our screen just went kind of weird. So um, <laughs> spirits. Yeah. We're talking about spirits. <laughs> yep. And, and so, about the time she said, I'm here, the 360 pointed right at her. Oh, wow. <laughs> and that's the way the 360 works from what we were told by the designer was that whichever direction the, the, energy's the energy is at is the direction the 360 lights up. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And then he lit it, then Michael lit it up to the next next color and then Jim asked him to keep lighting it up and it was four, four colors. It lit up, yeah about four colors on demand oh, wow. I've been yeah. looking at that. so that was pretty cool that would be cool. and Michael's made a comment yeah yeah it was it was really interesting to see that work yeah we have a video of it so on our YouTube channel yes oh awesome yeah everyone's gonna have to check that out yeah, you met a good friend of ours there that weekend, uh, Danette Olson. We met so many people there. Yeah, we met so many people. She's going to be on our show to... next week talking about kindred spirit the thing because she goes on a lot of them. And they went to Hawaii, and she's going to talk about the Hawaii trip. Okay. Oh, oh cool. that'd be cool. We met yeah. her at Ferrar at one of the schoolhouses here in Iowa. That's how we got. We've never been there. Yeah, we have never been there. So that's something we definitely need to try definitely to figure out. Check out Ferrar. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you can ask Adam and Alec. They love. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Tammy says she's looking at a picture if she remembers her now. Oh. <laughs> but we've had so many people up there for the two days or three days. You know, it's hard yeah, to she just says. popped up on the chat, and I was like, oh, yeah, I recognize her. <laughs> <laughs> we, like we said, we met so many people up there. It was kind of crazy. Oh, yeah, I bet there's a ton of people that go to those. Oh, yeah. I'd like to. Probably 150 plus. We've been trying to get down to to the winery to do an investigation at the winery, but we just haven't got there yet. Yeah. I, I really want to mean. hear about the Sally House. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> what kind of stuff <laughs> get the Sally House? <laughs> He's like, oh right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna let Jim start that one off. <laughs> yeah, I was like, say we we helped out. We was up there, you know, last Friday. We helped out at Hunter Atchison. We actually did the Sally House. We did the McIntyre Villa. We did public events for both of them for him. And um, I think I had the weirdest experience I've ever had doing this. We was because we've never done the Sally House before. We never been inside of it. Yeah, we're, we're, we're more into doing places that's either like saying we've got a lot of places that's never been investigated before. We were the first team. A lot of places have had maybe three or four investigated, you know, three or four staff investigated. We don't really do the, the high, the places that's been, you know, continuously investigated. <laughs> and um, yeah. we're doing the tour, no big deal, we go down the basement. And, you know, I wear glasses, so um, as we were getting ready to leave to go back upstairs, um, Maria just kind of gave us a tour of the place, that way we knew kind of where all the hot spots was. Mm -hmm. And there's a hole. There's a big hole in the wall in one of the walls. And what? Explain what that hole is. You remember what it is? Not really. So the reason the hole is there is the fam the Finneys that originally had the house. Mm -hmm. They bought that property next door, and the son built a house there. Well, they used this tunnel underneath, and that's where this hole was for from to go back and forth between the houses. And it's kind of, yeah, and it's kind of caved in. Yeah, it's not a huge hole. I mean, but like I said, it's not like you can just walk there. It's just a big hole, you know, in the base of all the walls. And um, I didn't talk, I didn't tell Tammy this for about uh, four or five days, but as we were turning to go upstairs, like I said, I wear glasses, so it's kind of, you know, sometimes you see stuff that's not there, uh -huh. You know, because the way the glass side of glass is, but I swear to this day that I seen this out of eyes looking from that whole area. Oh, wow. Just a quick, just like, I mean, it was just like a, just a second. So, you know, I can't say, oh, yeah, I, you know, I seen them because I honestly don't know if it was just something from my glasses or what, but we had a really good activity there. We actually investigated after the public left for about two or three hours with, with a friend of ours. Mm -hmm. oh. And, um, of course... Explain to, explain to them about the downstairs because she won't go downstairs because she just it, it bothers her in the basement up there but about me and what I did. Yeah, so I was upstairs and the rest of the group with him and a friend of ours that went with us. Uh -huh. They were downstairs and, you know, I'm kind of listening for sounds and voices and stuff upstairs. And all of a sudden, one of the guests, he had our Oculus 5. And he goes, is anybody here with us? Uh -huh. And Abla says, soon. And of course, they all screamed and everything. It was kind of funny. <laughs> and then, so. what the next guest did. So they were sitting there talking and just doing kind of an EVP session. And next thing you know, they're like, one of the ladies goes, do you see where you're standing? And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and he goes, oh, he was standing on the where the pentagram used to be. Oh. oh and so he goes, Well, I guess you all are safe. I guess I'm the one who's kind of messed up. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm upstairs going, Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we had some good activity in the kids' room, in the master bedroom. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some stuff in there that, you know, I won't want to tell you stuff, but there's some stuff in there if you look good, you can debunk certain things like any place. Yeah. Because like say there's a there's you know, we don't use the K two much except for maybe you know the first, you know, we kinda of do a, a quick sleep. There's actually downstairs in the is it the front room that got that one there's yeah. a there's a metal lamp down there. And it's unplugged, but yeah it'll actually if you if you 
put the K2 in certain spots, will actually hit, hit K2 hits. And we've yet, we have not figured that out at all. And actually, Alec and Adam, mm -hmm. when they were doing their live feed, they are actually the ones who discovered this. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh yeah. They, they did the Sally House. They did the Sally House before, the week before the week us. Before us. Uh, and they were taking their uh, K2, and it was going all the way to red, just like ours was. Uh-huh. And we actually moved the lamp in different places throughout the house, and we were still picking up K2 hits. Oh, wow. Well, that'd be so cool. we don't know. It's yeah. one of those old yeah, it's like how the 70s. 70s where it has like a vase shape and then the glass circular and then the regular lamp. I mean, there's no, no light bulb in the thing. It was not plugged in. So we're not sure if maybe the – bottom base type thing has some kind of yeah. magnetic field or or what hmm. huh weird yeah, that, yeah interesting that was kind of a weird question yeah i mean you can move it you know from different, different rooms and it's still you're still getting k2 hits but it's just weird it was like certain spots to get a k2 hit you can move it back there again there would be nothing uh -huh. and then you move it to the top and get a k2 hit where you hadn't had a k2 hit before so we have a few that like, say we're going to go back one day to like say to do a little bit more investigating, but we have a lot, we have quite a bit of equipment go off up there. We have um, we actually do a lot of our light feeds through Paranormal Warehouse. They kind of that we kind of teamed up with them for all, for a lot of our light feeds. We have some we have some two or three videos from South House on Paranormal Warehouse. Huh. And then we I think one of them, yeah we they they've been pretty good to us as far as letting us you know get on their show and, and do their and do their some light feeds with them. From there. Very nice. You know, they have like, what, how many thousands? Of, I don't know how many thousands of, you know, viewers they have, you know, where we have, you know, three or four hundred or something, you know, we'll get three or four hundred views there. We'll get, you know, quite a, we'll get thousands of views from doing live feeds on their site. Wow, that's awesome. That's a trip we're going to try to make next year. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a, it's a small place, but it's it's active though. It's pretty active for the size of it. Yeah, and you have McIntyre Village just up the street from there too. We're gonna try and hit both, both of them. Yeah, that's what we want to do. That's our yeah. McIntyre is pretty active as well. We've, okay, it's yeah. not disappointed us at all. <laughs> well, go ahead. Go ahead. And yeah, explain what you found there. <laughs> Um, let's see. The first time we investigated the place, um, it was just the two of us. Yeah. We were there from four o'clock in the afternoon till two in the morning. Uh -huh. Um, we heard, we had just come out of what they called the Lu Lucy's parlor and they had seen a shadow figure in that room. So we we're in there and the door opens by itself. Um, and we had just come out of there and was checking all of our equipment and we were going to go up to the attic and we were in the attic for maybe five, 10 minutes. Yeah. And I mean, the way our camera was set up, you could see us coming and going if we, you know, if we right. had come down or anything. Right. And all of a sudden you hear these loud footsteps coming up the stairs. Oh, wow. I mean, I was listening to it on the on the recording, and I it freaked me out just listening to it. I was like, "Holy cow!" And that's one. That's oh one of the. God. That's one of the main. One of the big claims they have up there yeah. is that. Yeah, because that's the main one of the. That's the main staircase, and they have seen shadows coming from that from that staircase. They've heard the footsteps. Um, was it the second? Yeah, it was the same night. We were coming down the stairs. Just before, you yes, know. and it it has one set of stairs and then a pretty good sized landing and then the next set of stairs. Well, as we're talking, you can hear us, and we hadn't started coming down the stairs yet. But that very last set of stairs, you actually see like these ball of lights, and it looks like they're walking down the stairs in front of us. Oh, oh wow. holy cow! That's crazy. Yeah. And then, then, yeah, then all of a sudden you'll see us and you'll actually see where our flashlights are coming down, you know, from the staircase. So you can right. tell it's a totally different light. Yeah. Yeah. Because we have he we have headlamps that we wear. Yep. yep and so you can tell the difference. Right. Of what, yeah. what they were. Yeah. All of the all of that is on YouTube. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, we I caught. was watching some of your YouTubes, but I was at work today, and it's like, I kept getting interrupted, and I lose my place where I was watching. <laughs> <laughs> And that's with us, you know. I'm not. A, I'm not with what people call. I'm not an horror fan at all. Right. We're so, but actually, in Macintosh now we're using night vision cameras, which is IR. And in the basement, we have the camera in the very back wall, facing which will be going towards the stairs to go upstairs. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, we pick up, and it's just. I mean, it's just a brief second. I don't even know how I noticed it. Ah, yeah. You see this green like part? You see this green ball just shoot in front of the camera. So we don't know if it was a bug. We don't know if it's dust. But my biggest thing is, you know, we're running, we're running IR cameras. Uh-huh. It should be black and white, if anything. There shouldn't have been any kind of color whatsoever. Right. right. We can't say it's we can't say it's anything paranormal. What we did post it because it's just it's hard to explain. It's, right. it's, it's like a small. It's unknown. Yeah, it's not like a slowly move. It just like comes in just within like a uh, like just a, a second. It's gone. Yeah. It's gone. It just you can see like a streak as it if you saw that on video down. I don't know how he caught it because it took me three or four times to watch it to actually. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. But it's got. But the thing is, with the green tint, which is hard to explain. Yeah, yeah. Right. And we had a male. And we had a male voice tell us to get out. Oh, I love those male voices that tells you to get out. Uh huh. Well, we didn't hear. Oh, it, yeah. We didn't. Yeah, we didn't hear it. We were actually were. We were having a conversation in that back room. And was walking through, and as soon as we started heading up the stairs, then you hear "get out." <laughs> wow! Yeah. Yeah, we picked it up on recording. We didn't actually. Yeah, hear we it. picked it I up. I actually heard it. it. Yeah, me too. But the second time we investigated the McIntyre was National Ghost Hunting Day, and we had. Seven girls with yeah, us? Yeah, seven girls. Seven ladies with us. Me and seven ladies and my wife. That was a pretty good night. <laughs> he loved it. <laughs> so we started upstairs in the attic, and one of the gals asked him to make a noise, and Jim was sitting behind us, and all of a sudden you hear this loud bang. I was, we, I mean, you see us all kind of jump. And I turned around, I was like, was that you? And he's like, no, I'm just sitting here. He was putting the equipment together. And then all of a sudden, you hear two more bangs. And there's only 10 people. There's seven yeah. ladies, you and me, and, um, and the Jeff. owner. Yeah, the owner. Wow. And it was like, holy cow. And it was in that room that we were in, You could, but it was like on the other side of the room. Yeah. And we had some 360 action there. We were down in Lucy's parlor, and one of the gals thought she saw the, we had the door closed, and she thought she saw the light um, fade out. Yeah, from the bottom of the door. And that was kind of funny because Jim had just said, can anybody walk by the door to scare the girls? Yeah. And, of course, I'm used to hearing his voice, so I heard what he had said. The rest of them only heard scare the girls. <laughs> so when he said so when he said what he had actually said, they all kind of started giggling and everything. It was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, I was the, I actually was in a room beside where they were. I was in the next room over, just kind of sitting there relaxing. Yeah. Just listening for stuff. So that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, they're giggling all the time. Like, did you just walk in the hallways? Like, I'm sitting right here in the same spot I did in. <laughs> <laughs> but the the funny thing was when we went down to the basement with them, we were doing the flashlight test, which we're not big fans of the flashlight, but right. um, we, uh, <laughs> they had that, those going off like crazy. And yeah. I mean, they were on command and I actually asked them, asked, are you the um, spirit that told us to get out? And it actually lit up. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. Danette said in the chat here, she says the B&B across from the McIntyre is supposed to be active, too. That's what she heard. And the the Glick. Yeah, I don't think they'll let you in. That's the Glick, and I don't believe they will let you in to investigate it. Because we have asked. <laughs> no. Who says you yeah, can so. stay over and investigate in your room? <laughs> you could probably yeah, do yeah, that. You could probably yeah. do that. Yeah. There's a loophole right there. Yeah, that's exactly. Loophole, yeah. 
<laughs> That's the only loophole. <laughs> yeah, actually, we've had some. What little time we spent in Action, we had some pretty good luck. We actually investigated another a, a, a building that not too many people have actually, as far as paranormal investigators, have investigated. Uh -huh. And it was weird because I've never picked up an EVP within 20 seconds of doing a, of doing a session before since we've been doing this. It was like, because we was just getting a tour, we wasn't even investigating yet. But the lady that, that, that has the store there, she's like, you guys want to walk around? So she walked us around through the basement, through the all three floors, the first, second, and third floor. And, and they have a little room they call, it's kind of like a secret room. It's kind of hard to explain. It's actually a room in the basement that has windows showing from the room to the basement. Huh. Big, like the big old art shaped windows. And it's yeah. old because you can tell by the... Um, because it's the glass with the with like the chicken wire and, and mesh oh, net. Yeah. And then it's got two like sliding barn doors on each end of this room. And I, you know, it's me, Tammy, the lady that runs the owns the store, and one of her friends. Well, I kind of slipped off away from me, and I was like, I'm gonna do an EVP session. This little what they call the secret room. I wasn't in there 15 seconds. So I'm you know talking all. You know, I, I asked some questions about what the room was. Because you know, the building is 18, I don't remember, 1800s. Yeah. Or mid, mid, late, late 1800s. So, you know, I'm asking, well, did this room have something to do with maybe prohibition or something? You know, because, of, you know, it's just it's an odd room to have windows, you know, in, in a basement. Mm -hmm. And I actually, within 15 seconds of my EVP session, I went back and played it. I actually picked up a male's voice talking to me. Wow. I asked him, I told him, you know, nobody... Nobody seems to know what this room is, you know. She's been trying to figure out nobody would tell her. And excuse my language, but the what came out of EVP session was Mel's voice and said bullshit. Oh, gee. <laughs> so somebody knows what no one will tell. Someone tried telling her that this this room was a little cold shit. With windows in it and barn, sliding like barn doors, a cold yeah. shit wouldn't even make sense. Uh, uh, and I picked geez. up, and then I asked something else. I was asking, you know, what kind of... You asked if it was... You asked if it was Pro -pro prohibition, you got yeah. Yeah. Well, I asked about about what different types of drinks. What was I asking um, exactly? You said, "Is this where you had your whiskey, uh, wine, and something else?" But we it sounds like it says bourbon. No, right? it's in gin. Oh, in gin. Sounds like it says in gin on the on the EVP. I think that's on. Oh, wow. Is that on our YouTube? That should be on our YouTube. It might be, but it's just. But like I say, I'm, I, you know, the stores open upstairs, obviously, but the voice is so clear. You know, it's not coming from upstairs, and I was the only male in the basement at the time. Wow. I say fifteen. I've never walked fifteen sets and been doing an EVP session to pick up a voice. No, no, no. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> I mean, that, and we, when we picked up some 360 action in the second or third floor up there, we was asking, nobody was around, we was probably 20 feet up, each from, from the 360. It sat there for probably 20 or 30 minutes, but no. Then James was asking questions, all of a sudden it started kind of moving around, like, you know. Uh-huh. Very nice. All right, next one up. Um, we want to talk about Malvern Manor. Um, I did see <laughs> that with your with your door upstairs that kept opening. Um, we no. didn't have a door open, but we did. We um, picked up girls' voice. We picked up a girl's voice up in the attic, and there was only five adults in the building at the oh, time. Nice. And Jim, Jim and I were the only two that would go up. The rest of them were too scared to go up to oh. the attic. <laughs> oh, jeez. And they've been doing this longer than we have. I mean, this was our first. Yeah, we spent the night, and they never come close to going to the attic. Yeah. They wouldn't go to the door of the attic. Oh, wow. The three of them. Yeah. So we were up there, you know, like, you know, because we've heard that there was supposed to be a little room throughout the, you know, throughout Mount Manor. So we got up there and um, was asked some questions. Like, we get ready to leave. It's like, well, we're going to leave, and we'll be back, you know, later on to talk more to you. You know, didn't hear nothing. Went downstairs and all of a sudden you hear, you hear well, the first, who was the first one? Bye bye. The first one was bye bye. Oh. And then. And, and that was all we had heard for a long time in this recording. And a paranormal house was supposed to ask us if they could share that on their show. Yeah, they were doing a special, they were doing a special program where they were choosing 
different groups to do this program and they asked if we could they could put that on there. We said sure. And like I said, we played this thing a hundred times and we kept hearing bye bye. You know, plain as day. Well after they played it, well, all of a sudden we heard another we heard which sounded like the same girl from a father that went maybe like she was you know farther away. Uh-huh. You actually we actually picked up what what's your name? I'm thinking did somebody doc you know my deal was you know what happened did someone mess with my you know my recording? Because mm-hmm. I know it wasn't there. Well, mm-hmm. so the first thing we done, you know, we pulled the file up and played it, and we actually picked up what's your name, and then it's real soft, and if like like something was getting closer to the to the mic, and then we heard uh, bye bye, and we've oh, never wow. heard that before. And that, and I know I played it a hundred times, listening to it for oh. you know friends of ours and everything. That's it's kind of weird how all of a sudden you pick up a, a voice that you've never picked up before. Yeah. Oh. That's cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And what else have we had? We got a shadow. We got a shadow figure. We are, from what Josh Hurd has told us, we are the only team. We're the first group. We're, the only well, group. we are the first team to actually capture what they call the shadow figure. Ah. Yeah, and that's our, that's our and that is on that is on our website under pictures. Okay. Very good. It's not even from the shadow hallway. It's from the opposite end of the, of the building. Mm-hmm. We caught it our second time. Actually, basically, we caught it by mistake because, you know, the first thing, because the shadow figure, you know, they have the shadow hallway where they always see, you know, motion moving from left to right, you know, and everything. Uh-huh. That was, a, that's the hallway that was it. Johnny Hauser that had the shadow mm-hmm. come at him. Yeah. You know, first thing we do, we set, you know, we set our DVR system up there. We set troll cameras down. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And that night, I don't know if it was, we was there was four of us. I don't know if it was the people we were with, you know, that, that we actually went with. But we basically had no activity at all that night. We couldn't we couldn't get anything to, as far as activity. Wow. So we ended up. They actually they actually invited us out. So they decided they wanted to leave about three o'clock or four o'clock, something like that. I don't remember exact time. You know, in the morning. So it's like, well, you know, we'll go back up. So we actually the gentleman that was that was there grabs the trail camera. Bring us down to the other to the hall where it's not supposed to have shadow figures and sets it down. You know, while he's getting all the other equipment we had downstairs there. But we actually picked it up with that troll camera. Oh wow. Very and, nice. And like I say it's you can see, you know, we have been in that place twice. I mean we know what the wall looks like and there's no way that and you can see that basically like they hit it's like it's peeking out of a doorway in the hallway from the It's coming uh, have you guys been to Malvern? Oh, yes. Many times. Okay. So you know the room that everybody uses as the safe room in our the equipment room. Yes. Right. Correct. Oh, right, off, awesome. right off the kitchen. It's yep. speaking yep. up from that room. Yes. Yeah, by up. the stairs. Oh, up. wow. That's oh, awesome. Looking down, to the, you know, looking down to the shadow hallway. Oh, that's cool. But you see a head and shoulders, and you, it starts down a little bit, like maybe halfway down. Yeah, you see side. part of his part of his legs, and then it kind of disappears. And you know the story about the gentleman. That, yeah, you guys know the story about the gentleman that used to chase the nurses, you know, for all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh, he used to come down that hallway, and then he'd stop at that kitchen. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and you know, he was what six foot something. Yeah, he's close to seven foot. I think. And this this shadow figure is pretty tall. If you look at the picture of close, it's like a real tall shadow figure. Oh wow. We're gonna have to see if we can catch that. We're going there May twenty fifth. Yep. Oh, cool. Cool. <laughs> cool. Cool. Right. Oh yes. Yeah, that's that's fun. Yeah, that that's a good place. Yes. yes well, last time we were there, we were sleeping on the couches and stuff, and my blanket got pulled off me, but I never did see anything. Okay. Yeah. Never caught well, anything on the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> well, that reminds us the gentleman that we went with the first time in the group. We slept in the room, you know, the, the the main room there where the wheelchair and stuff was. Right. And we all, you know, we all threw up air mattresses. And he actually claims that, you know, he was sleeping on his back. And he was sleeping on his back, but he actually claimed that it felt like something come up and grabbed his foot and pulled it. He actually left for the night. He he slept outside. He would not come back in until morning. Oh, <laughs> jeez. Wow. He's just laying there, and all of a sudden, just felt like something grabbed the top of his foot and just jerked and just kind of uh, pulled his foot. <laughs> he leaves crazy. his wife there, and he goes out and sleeps outside. Yeah, these people hardly know us, and they 
he walks off and leaves his wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's what we had more of our motion ball in the, um, which was Inez's room, I think. Mm-hmm. There is something that we have noticed, though. I, we, we can't ever get anybody else to kind of, you know, like the pair unity gal. We noticed the first time we were there, Inez's um, closet was open. The closet door was open. Well, the second time, the door was closed. Uh-huh. And the so, first time, we had lots of activity in there. So we don't know if that closet door may have something between, you know, that's something if you guys do, you might try maybe with a close at first and see if nothing happens. And then maybe open it up later on. And she likes to have the lights on. Oh, okay. Okay. Because we asked, we asked her specifically if we, she wanted us to leave the lights on and she lit up the motion ball. Yeah, I, and I she, did watch that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she was, she played with that thing for what, 12 hours, 10, 12 hours? And we've tested those motion balls. You know, we, we've set them up on our plane that says, you know, for hours and never do anything until you will actually go and touch or she can, like, bump the entertainment system and then I'll buy that. Uh-huh. We've, only had it, we've only had them go off two other times. One was at Baby Mansion, mm-hmm. and one was this last week, this last time at that Strange Escapes in the bunker. Oh, wow. And we, take, and we take them all the time with it. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. I, I know she likes our dog. We have oh yeah a dog, and it has the K two in its collar right. and stuff, and uh-huh. she kept tugging it and everything because the lights kept going off and on in that room. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that might be a suggestion if you guys would try and let us know because, like, say the first time they closed the door was open. The second time we had like say basically no activity. We had the shadow figure. We was there from four o'clock until two three o'clock in the morning. We had the shadow figure all night. But we, when we got when we got home, we realized, you know, looking at the cameras, that that Inez's closet door was shut. So we don't know if that might have something to do with it. Uh huh. You know, like maybe like I don't know if it'd be like a maybe. You know, I, I'm not. I don't know much about the portal deal. Maybe there's a portal with that within the closet when it's open, mm-hmm. or what? Huh. Oh, we'll have to we'll have to check that out and try Definitely. and see what happens. We'll, we'll check yeah, it out. We'll stuff. let you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because we've seen stuff, you know, every time we see a group at a place, he's like, hey, this is what we caught, you know, see if you guys, you know, let us know if you catch anything like that. And we've never got any response back from anybody that's, that's went to Melbourne. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely try it out because we're going there twice yeah, this we year. So we can there you do a couple tries and then let you know how it goes. Cool. See what we find there out. There you go. There you go. Oh, yeah. Let's see if we get. What else are we going Melbourne with? in July. Oh, yeah, again in July. So oh, it'll be hot up go. in that attic again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, I love it when it's hot up there. Yeah. <laughs> when we were dripping with sweat. June. June. No, we were in July. Yeah, yeah, we went up there in July and September, I think, so now we're in November both times. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, yeah, we know what, that, what the heat's like in the attic. Oh, no, yeah. We were drenched. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. How about the Oz Museum? The Oz Museum. Yeah, we had a we had some activity there. And we went up there with creeps. Okay. They, they had an event they invited us up to. Like I said, we worked with them three or four times now. Mm-hmm. We've done baby with them. We've done Baker. Baker. We've done the Oz, Oz Museum. Museum. So I've done something else to them. That's that might be it. I think but, that's the only three. But they invited us up, and like I say, we were we were fortunate. We were the ones that actually got to be in the Oz Museum. Mm-hmm. They stayed in the, in the auditorium, at the mm-hmm. auditorium, right? The, they stayed at the um. Oh, gosh, I can't even think what the name of yeah. it is. <laughs> the theater. theater the, the theater. theater. Yeah. So, uh, okay. The Columbia Theater. The Columbia. Yeah. 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 They stayed there for the night. Can't think of the name Oz. of it. <laughs> I would say we, you know, it was a public event, and we had a pretty good time. Mm-hmm. We were in, back in the back. They have like a like an area back museum. It's like a little theater. They got a little movie screen, little TV set up. But we didn't really get up there during the day. We don't know if it was. I was more assuming it, they were playing the Oz Museum, the, the Wizard of Oz mm-hmm. picture. I guess we really yeah. don't know because we wasn't up there. The time we got up there, it was about an hour and a half. We got to do a walk, and that was it. But um, like I say, Tammy was in that room. Like I said, all the, all the 
Um, gas. All the gas was sitting there, you know, talking. They were she had a little three sixty on it. Well, I stand. I was standing outside and noticed because we, you know, we had all the lights out down there. And I noticed I seen like what looked like you know like shadow moving. Mm-hmm. And what two vessels that come out? Yeah, one? you had one. Yeah, one. Okay, I asked, I asked anybody like, well, can anybody come out here and verify what I'm seeing? Because you know you always want you know somebody else you. If we have somebody like, you know, like Crusoe, we'll, we'll get one man to come instead of both of us, you know, trying to figure it out. That way you have two different teams. Of course, so they were out there at the, uh, the theater, so they, uh, the gentleman come out, and he's standing there, and he was, he was, and he was actually seeing it, too. He goes, it's getting, it's getting darker than getting lighter. It's like something was moving across, you know, back and forth in the hallway, and I asked the gentleman, I was like, well, sir, can you watch this? I said, I'm going to walk up there and tell me, you know, what you see. To kind of, you know, see if I can, you know, somehow reproduce it because there's no fans going. There was no lights because once they shut the door there, it's pretty much, it's I've never seen any windows. <laughs> I don't think there's any windows at all. Not, just the glass cases. I told my mom, I, walk, I kind of walked up, you know, where the glass cases was at that end. I said, tell me, you know, where about you think you see it. And he actually seen it about the same spot I was actually seeing it. I go, I thought I stood there for five or ten minutes. I think two or three of them came out, was kind of peak. They came out in the hallway, was kind of watching no, we he, all finally came out. I'm like, do you see anything now? He goes, no. He goes, I don't see anything. So I walked back to him, and it wasn't three, four minutes. You could see, you could see it in the same thing, getting like something was moving up at the, you know, 15 feet up, mm-hmm. you know, in the dark. And we really didn't visit the theater too much. We pretty much we did a little bit, but we pretty much stayed at the Oz yeah. Museum. Oh, and we had we had some activity upstairs on the second floor. Yeah. Yeah, second floor. We had a little bit of activity up there. The little us up there with the poly. And I don't remember. That exactly. has a weird feel. Up yeah, there. that has a weird feel. I don't know if the floors aren't perfectly even. I don't know if it has something to do with the floors. But you go up there and it's like the air sticker. It used to be apartments. Apartments, I think it was. At one time. Huh. And or I think it might have been living for the people in the store owner, maybe. Other two. Yeah, I can't remember, but yeah, it. It used to be a bank, and that's who we finally figured. I think we figured out that that's who the shadow was, was the guy that built the mm-hmm. place as a bank, because we were asking if it was him, and it, the 360 was lighting yeah. up. Hmm. And you're like, you know, all the cooking is hard to tell because there's, you know, no one's actually proven that the spirit exists yet. Like, we've all been trying, you know. <laughs> yeah, it works like it's you know you're not sure what you know what it's actually picking up. Like I said, the 360 that that we've had, they seem like they can sit for hours and never never be that. You ask it, you light this thing up, and bam, it'll light up. Sometimes, and other times you can ask 30 times and never get any response. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the most scariest place? that you've ever investigated? Bandit Hospital in Kansas City, Missouri. (laughs) (laughs) We got our first attachment there. Oh, wow. wow. And thank God the group that invited us out they had a way of of, uh, doing the the cleansing or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, very nice. That was, uh, yeah, that, I can honestly say that was probably the first time I've ever been scared on an investigation. <laughs> the floor was on the third. We're floor. on the fourth floor, and then she's. We're trying to get her down on, on the fourth floor. That the stairs are all half gone and everything. Oh my god! Because she's kind of like me, you know, to get her outside for a little bit to get some air. And the, mm. the funny thing about that is, they're in the process. I, that is going to be um, all condos. Oh wow. What? They're gonna be condos? Yeah, well, yes. the house will be turned into condos. Oh. Well, that'll be I interesting. Feel, <laughs> yeah, oh, I feel sorry for those people because whatever's there. Mm. Oh, it's well, gonna be really good. stirred up after that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well they were doing construction on the other end of the hospital. See when she got her attachment it was weird because they had actually shut certain parts off to us and re- and opened other parts of the building. Yeah. Our in the building we were at had no electricity, you know, at all. Oh wow. So but they um but we tried to get on one floor, like, well that was shut off because the you know, construction was started out on there, but they opened up some some several other different areas of the hospital. But this hospital is huge. 
it was a big hospital, and that we think that had something to do with it. We actually had some shadow play in the hall while I was in the chapel outside the hall. You can actually see a little bit. Look in. Honestly, it looked like maybe a child because it was a short little. It was a short shadow figure. Uh -huh. It was back and forth in the hall, like playing peeky boo or something. It was weird. That was the same night she had her attachment. Yeah, we had a lot of stuff happen that night. Everything was pretty good until we did our group in but our group session in the chapel and the the group that invited us out and this was like our sixth time of investigating this place oh, mm -hmm. so you know i had had several experiences every time we went with a particular spirit mm -hmm. and so when we were up in the chapel you know everything was good you know we were kind of talking to the spirits and doing our normal stuff and she said something that just totally made them mad because the energy changed. We started seeing shadows. We started hearing noises. And she was like, let's, she was a medium, isn't she? Yeah, you? she's a medium. She's and a medium. She's like, well, it's time for us to leave here. She we is. Need to go back to base camp. Yeah, she is. We need to get out of here now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. So we left, and that's when we got, we all went up to the fourth floor. I see. Uh, yeah, it's ICU. And we were setting up, and I, the spirit, likes what I call a cat and mouse game. Uh -huh. um, he would come up behind me, and I would turn around, and he would back off. So we, you know, we would always do that a few times, and then he would just leave. But oh, that night, yeah, you know, that night, we weren't up there five minutes, still putting out equipment and all that stuff. He showed up, and I was like, Something's not right. He was closer to me. He was, he was closer to me that night. Um, he didn't back off from me as much as he usually did. He stayed longer. His energy was a lot stronger than it usually was. Oh. So I think he was I think he was warning me and trying to protect me of what was going to come. Yeah, because she's semi sensitive to Yeah. And tell him about the beeping. And so right after <laughs> he left you know, I made a comment to the lead investigator. I was like, um, my friend's here. And she's like, oh, really? And so I told her, told him what was going on. And as soon as he left, all of a sudden we started hearing this beeping sound. Uh huh. Right. Uh, this in the building has no electricity at all. We know, we know this from, you know, from the you know, <laughs> times we investigated. Right. Did you know how the old doctor's pagers would sound? Yes. Well, this thing would be, it would sound like it'd be like right beside you. It'd be really loud. Then it might be to the left of you, and it's not like it's maybe 20 feet away. It would be a lot softer sounding. And it'd be behind us. And the first thing we thought, oh, well, you know, somebody, somebody's accidentally turned a piece of equipment on, you know, coming up here. So we're going through the bags, digging out, checking all of our equipment, and all of our equipment's fine, but it was, just, it was just like, it'd be like really loud beep, and it'd be like a really soft beep. Then it'd be at the other end of the building. It was weird. It was like it was. It was almost like it was a doctor's picture going on. Is that something that I could explain to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that'd be that. that'd be crazy. Yeah, and then we had a black. And like we said, we're not orb people, but Jim actually saw two orbs and captured it on camera. Well, I saw a dot. I like. Yeah, he saw a dot and caught it on camera. Oh, both wow. time. The That's... second one was actually, and all of us saw this. We had this. Because down the hallway was, um, oh, uh, dialysis. Yeah, that was dialysis. And we just saw this black mass coming at us. Oh, wow. Jim, Jim actually caught all of that on camera. Yeah, I caught that on the record. You, you, you got to look at the situation. Okay, we're upstairs on the third floor and fourth floor, pitch black, you know, because we're not on the side, you know, the windows are we're facing in the middle of the hospital. Glass everywhere. And, you know, I've seen this little light, just the light. But I, knew, I knew we were the ones upstairs and just the six, five or six of us because each, each one had a floor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, we had, I snapped a couple pictures, but you could stand there in the dark and actually see it get darker down this hallway. And I'm talking, you know, 75 feet down. Oh, wow. The picture, in the picture, you can actually see those are on our I think those are on our website under pictures. Yeah, I'll double check. I'll have to double check. But you know, I took you know, it was just a regular thirty-five millimeter camera, or just a regular a visual camera, not thirty-five uh -huh. millimeter. I had to snap a picture. You know, you can see on the left side, you can see you know we're just different debris and stuff like a chair or something. Well, the second picture, 
how that gets started. The third picture, it's dark. You can actually see the light. You can see like the image on the wall of the hallway, or the, like, like the half the flash, it's just like half the circle of the flash. Like the flash would not penetrate down that hallway. Oh, you can actually see like a half a circle on the wall in the, in the, in the, like the doorway of the, the hallway. Oh, which is that's pretty weird. awesome. And they were in the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we started like that hole is getting darker and it can't be getting darker because it's pitch black now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That would be insane. If we don't have those pictures, well, I, I think they're on our, on our yeah, uh, I don't know web page. Have. If not, we'll send them to you so you can look at them. It's okay, pretty wild. Awesome. Pictures. Yeah, I'd like to see those. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah, that was the first time I actually got scared with my attachment because I had no clue what was happening. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my legs, I turned around to where my guy usually comes from. And this was January. So, I mean, it was cold anyway. Uh huh. <laughs> you know, middle of winter. It's, yeah, it's pretty cold. Yeah. So, the bottom of my legs up to my knees were just like froze. Like I was standing in ice. That's how cold they were. Oh, and then wow. you know how you get the feeling like when your hands and stuff go to sleep. Oh yes. Yep. That's what it started feeling like. And then I started getting kind of nauseous and just lightheaded. And so I kind of leaned over the nurse's station. And about that time I just had this wave of energy coming at me. And I was like, what in the world? I was like, well, you know, it's, whatever's going on is affecting me. Uh-huh. And I thought it's like, I asked the lead, I was like, because she used to be a nurse that worked at this hospital. I was like, what is over here? And so she started naming off all the room, patient rooms. Mm-hmm. And she goes, she goes, why? And I was like, well, we're being watched. I said, not by one person. I said, we have a ton of people watching us right now. Oh, and, that's, and that's where all this energy was coming from. I was like, this is weird. You know, it was like they wanted me to know that they were there. Oh, and then I went, yeah. And then I went and sat down in her chair and my whole body was engulfed in that cold and oh, numbness. That, and that, I was like, okay, something is. That's when we left. When that's we about what, you know, about five minutes later, we left and I was like. I went downstairs to the. To the base camp. Yeah. And I and I told the lead, I was like, something happened to me up there. I said, I do not feel right. She says, well, do you think you got a possession? I was like, no. I said, I don't feel like anything like that. I said, but something definitely got a hold they of me. They did a cleansing on you. You were fine. Uh-huh. Yeah, they, they did a cleansing, and I was fine. Then we went back in. No, we didn't. <laughs> oh, did we let that yeah, we, go back yeah, in? We, left. we ended up leaving. Because I, I I was so drained and everything. I was like, I, I, I need thought to we went back and we've been there so many times. You know. uh, yeah, it all kind of blends in together. Because <laughs> <laughs> we were gone. At, Once or twice a month, we were gone. Yeah. They actually had the building until the construction crew needed that in the building to investigate. We had the morgue there on that side of the building. It was weird the way this hospital was there. Was actually, there was actually patients' records were there. We found x rays. We found. Tubes that we found, test tubes of blood in them. Oh my gosh! Wow. They actually had. We have. We have some pictures. I don't think we were them on. We have pictures where the they had the beds still had mat the, the beds the mattresses still have plastic on some of the mattresses. Oh wow! Brand, brand new. Like brand new mattresses. They're Holy just throwing. You know, they, it was. I mean, there was the baby's beds was up there. The the um the all patients' beds was up there. They still had the. They had some TVs that were still yeah. up there. The Jeez. maintenance area still had parts. equipment and parts. Yeah, this place was abandoned in two thousand. It was closed down in two thousand two. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! And we invested okay. it two years ago. Yeah, it'd be two. Two years, years ago. Yeah, almost. It'll be three years in January. Yeah. So that was kind of wild to have all that stuff. I mean, we you can sit there and just go through patients' records till. Oh wow! That is yeah. insane. Yeah, we had a bunch of X-rays. I was going to grab them, but we never, we never made it back up. They closed it down. <laughs> I thought the X-rays would be good in another hospital, you know, for you know, for um, uh, like trigger, trigger objects. objects. Right? Yeah, like a trigger object. And yeah, I didn't like say so we we hoped had one more month, and they closed it down. The last, our last investigation, like really, I need to do that one more time. Oh man, that sucks. 
That we, sucks. we got a few things out of there, but not nothing, much. Not, <laughs> not nothing I needed. I'd like to add. <laughs> but they even had, they had probably, there was probably 75 IV poles out there. At least 75, just rooms full of the IV poles on them. Oh. It was weird. It's like they just closed the doors and walked away. Yeah. That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. <laughs> You would think they would have had to at least burn the or shred the, you know, the patient files. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Because nowadays that'd be a big HIPAA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It was crazy. Oh <laughs> well, gosh. that's like Edinburgh. Oh yeah. That's yeah. They, they have stuff have like that at Edinburgh too. Files of people that were there and everything else still there. Yeah. Just got up and wow. left. Yeah. Well, Malvern's got still has people's clothes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's true. true. What do you think? Did you ever hear the story about about somebody stealing a bunch of clothes up there from Malvern? I didn't hear about that, but the rocking chair yeah. was missing the last time we were there. I don't know about that. I didn't hear about the rocking chair. I rock guess they went to clothes and missing out on one of, one of the dressers. I guess Josh kind of put a deal out, like, you know, um, some about, you know, please return the clothes because they, they belong to, you know, Malvern Manor. I guess eventually they could. They, they somehow sent they back. turned back. I don't know if they sent them back or if they were sitting outside the door or what happened. But they, I think they sent them back. And some of them clothes are 30 years old, probably. It's not more. Why would anybody <laughs> want them? I don't know. Have you seen the clothes in there? <laughs> yeah, so I've seen them in there. Yeah, why would anybody want them? And they stole know. the the logbook that everybody wrote in about their experiences yeah, and stuff. Was lost a long why time would you take that? That was, stolen, that was stolen around the same time. Oh, my oh, gosh. Geez. People are just, oh, gosh. Well, yeah. like, like we said, the little white rocking chair when we went last time was missing. We told Josh, and he goes, it's in that room. No, it's not. So we went, looked all over for it. We never found it. That's huh. crazy. Yeah, we didn't hear about that. No, I didn't hear that. I heard about the clues because Josh did it on Facebook. I think he had an idea of what group it was. I don't know if it was a team or what it was. I think he had an idea, but he didn't want to you know, call it. But I was like, I know there's a bunch of clothes missing. Can you please return them or something like that? That's how you put it. Oh, wow. That's crazy. <laughs> Stealing clothes. Yeah. And the, they were not the most fashionable clothes either. I don't know why anybody. No. <laughs> no. They said them had to be, you couldn't have worn because they're as old as they were. Yeah, exactly. Oh, gosh. That's the craziness. Oh, jeez. <laughs> 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 Stealing clothes now. Stealing clothes, yeah. I thought I heard and a log yeah. book of all things. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Well, let's let's, let's go ahead and uh, tell all the listeners um, where they can find you guys at, like your information. Um, okay. Uh, you can find us on Facebook under Earthbound Voices Paranormal. Um, we have Twitter as well which we don't use a lot which we don't use a lot um and our, our website which is also just um it's www.earthboundvoicesparanormal.net okay our youtube channel our youtube channel and if you, and you get our paranormal house if you go under videos uh-huh there's a spot there you just find a paranormal house find the videos and there's a spot below you can just sit on the screen yeah there's a just deal search yeah, the search, you can actually type in our name, Miss Sarah Hughes from Mac and Church and, uh, Sally. and Sally House. Okay, very nice, very nice, okay. I don't think we have anything else, because we just got hooked up with them last year about, about September or so. Mm -hmm. Okay, very yep. nice. All right, I'm going to go through real quick, because the show's wrapping up here. I'm going to go through really quick here and just give shout-outs to everybody who was in live chat tonight. Um, we had Matt, Kelly, Wolf. Kim, myself, Candy, we had Shay tonight, Danette, Eye of the Beholder, we have a lot of stuff in here, but, well, and I think that's it for tonight for the chat, so thank you everybody who was in live chat tonight, and and, and to the ones that were just listening, listening wasn't yes. in chat. Yep, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Um, one quick other thing here. Um, I'm going to message um, or talk about here just real briefly is um, about uh, Stomp Out Bullying. 
Um, this was brought to our attention, and it's for a good cause. Um, any money that's donated helps um, this group um, with um, them running their 24-hour helpline. So if anybody's being bullied um, or needs help with that, they can contact um, this um, line. Um, it is... Uh, Stomp out bullying 877 no bully or stomp out bullying.org is where you can find more information out about this. But like I said, all proceeds go to um, them expanding their reach of the resources and allow them to run their 24 hour helplines. Um, so I just wanted to give a little shout out to that real quick. And I'd like to thank Jim and Tammy Beth for being on tonight. Thank you so much. It was awesome. Thank you um, for having we have us. So much more yeah, we thanks for having us. Tonight, I know. But we only have so much time. We only got halfway through my list. <laughs> <laughs> because Tammy talks too much. No, hey, hey, that's no, fine. No, no, it that's was... fine. That is fine with us. Um, well, good night, everybody. And thank you so much, Jim and Tammy. And we will talk thank to you, you soon. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to REP Paranormal and Friends. Be sure to check out Kim and Allison on Facebook at REP Paranormal Busters. 